John, this <laughs> seems very familiar, doesn't it? Three and four oh, after seven yeah. games, but we thought that they had a three-game stretch starting with the Bears game that were very right. winnable. They've lost two out of three. They had a stretch where they had to have these games because you look at the last, the second half of the schedule, and on paper it's very, very difficult. And so for you to get some momentum, for you to get in a position where you could make this season a worthwhile one, you had to have a better start than this. I mean, this is – you know, I know in this league, like, anything can happen. You know, we've seen that. And any team can beat anybody and any Sunday, blah, blah, blah. But you had to be better than this. And and they weren't. So they they have put themselves – It's you know, and it's funny because um, the last couple of years, I mean, each year it's been two and six, two and five, whatever. And this is, you know, three and four, well, that's better, except that when you look at the second half of the schedule – it's just you had to be better than this at this point. All right, so let's start with the offensive line, and we can go back to the off season. They knew they had to upgrade the offensive line. They chose not to do it in the early picks uh, of the NFL draft. They bring in Gates. They bring in Wiley. I looked at it. So last year in the entire season, Wentz was sacked 26 times, Heineke 19. That's 45. This is unfathomable, John. 40 yeah. sacks. How do you divvy up the blame? All right, because Hal gets some of it, the line gets some of it, I think the enemy gets some of it. How would you personally divvy up the blame? Well, for a while, you know, certainly um, in some of the earlier games, Howell's, um he did hold the ball too long, and that's part of, you know, a young quarterback. It's also something he did a little bit in college, and but it's also a young quarterback thing. Mm-hmm. So you knew that, and you knew you were probably going to go through that. I think it's um, been more than maybe what they anticipated. But then I do go back. I'm just like just, everything you just said, because you go back to the off season where, you know, you know, you have a young quarterback and what do young quarterbacks typically do? They typically hold the ball a little bit longer. So you've got to do a better job building that front and giving him a little bit more protection, knowing he's going to need that. And I think you need to have a very strong interior. And one of the things that I hear is, you know, he is a shorter quarterback, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, the Drew Brees comparison. And I think, I mean, I think the things they see in him are legit. That the kid can be a good quarterback, um, but he's a shorter quarterback. So what the Saints, you know, the, I would hear about the Saints and, you know, building a front like the Saints did with Brees, giving him a chance to basically be able to see over the D because you create good um, blocking up front in the interior. And I think even on that, the interception yesterday, good decision, ball's there. I mean, Dotson is open. I don't know that he could follow through or step into that throw to get it there, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not, I'm not going to blame just the line. I mean, he had to make a better throw, but I also look at it, and there's sometimes where guys are getting pushed back into his lap. And so it makes it tougher for him to throw. Um, and then, then you look at how, what situations are you putting him in? Mm-hmm. And I think yesterday is a classic example. I mean, that was, it was, I don't get, I, I'll, I was driving home last night. I was like, I just don't get it. Mm-hmm. I don't get why, you know, it was five. And I have to, you know, this is just my thought without having rewatched the game yet is just the number of deep, you know, five step drops against a team that you know is pinning their ears back to just go get them and, you know, moving the pocket better. Um, You watch on Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor's playing behind a line that was in worse shape. Worse shape. Way worse. By far. Way worse. It's not even close. You wouldn't have guessed it after that game. And, you know, they're like on the second series the Giants had, they have um, Hyatt's one-on-one with St. Juice on the outside. Mm -hmm. Instead of a five-step, you know, play play action, whatever, two-step, boom, just throw it. And that's a pass that Howell throws very well, yet we didn't see it until the second half. Later, you know, too far into the second half. Things like that. But they just, you've got to help your quarterback out as well. And I think that was a major case yesterday. Because that, you know, that, you know, there were times where the line is getting overwhelmed. Times are just losing. Um, But it wasn't, and again, this is my initial recollections. I don't remember times where, you know, Howell wasn't sitting there, sitting there holding, 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 holding. Oh, now you should have thrown that. No, it was, you know, it was get to your plant step, set up, boom, you're down. 
And well, I'll, I'll be you, honest with you. So that, so that's that's. All, I think it's it's everything. It's everything. It is everything. But I I, I did rewatch it this morning, and I didn't. You know, I'm rushing through it because I got to you know do this show. But um, you know, it's four thirty in the morning, and I'm and I'm rewatching the first half. And honestly, John, I thought they clearly made adjustments in the second half. But they actually made it. They started out. They were they were using running backs to chip. wasn't good enough because they were right. doing basic stunts, and on our old line was getting overwhelmed. Right. And then by the second quarter, and they were having tight ends in there too. And I didn't see it. I mean, I, listen, I didn't track it specifically, but they were in shotgun, and he wasn't only do, he was only doing like two or three steps, and he was getting hit. You're, you you're know, still, right? And it's, then they were still, bringing it's, it's in still a deeper drop, and and that yeah, and yeah. I got it, but but it's still yes, and I but I think part of the thing is too, you just you're not moving the pocket. You're not. They didn't changing, move the pocket. And, they did that yeah, in the second and half. Not, for right, sure. they're not change. They're not changing the launch angle, but I do think it's style of throws too, and there are times where when you're taking those two or three, and like, you know, there are a couple times where like where with the depth of the routes or something, and you know, can you can you get it? Um, a couple times where you get some of those. Again, you have this. You have press man coverage. Get some. Get some one on one crossers, yeah. right? And that, those kind of things. So it's a little bit. And that's why I say like I have to go back and rewatch to see it. But there were definitely times on it, some of those sacks. Where it was like that, and and that's where it's just you've got to help them out more. And I, you know, you know, listen, you know, it's I don't I think it's safe to say that that there were there are people that would in that locker room would say the same thing, you know, yeah. because it's just the you know it, it's that. But that was I think I thought yesterday was the worst example of that um, of the slowness to adjust. <laughs> to it and um well i think you know and sometimes yeah and sometimes sometimes then it's like sometimes you've got to execute too that's the thing like right you know sometimes guys are just getting beat up front it's like then but then it goes back to well what what are they here for right you know like who brought them but that so it all happens and it's never it's almost it's rarely just well, really just one guy, right? John, I mean, they had but, five sacks yeah. going in. That's the perspective. They weren't facing the Ravens who had 24 sacks going well, in. That's why They're I facing say, a team with five I sacks. I didn't match it in the first you, half. I'll be honest. Like, <laughs> I, I'll be, I, I thought they were going to – I mean, every game you're going in there, and, like, I'm watching these games. Like, you know, I put a lot of time watching these games before the mm -hmm. game, these other teams, and I'm looking at it as, like, they're going to get them because the the way – the kind of pressure that, that Wink Martindale throws at teams – and they have enough talent up there. And the same thing was like with Atlanta. You said the same thing. They're going to the, Atlanta didn't have a lot of sacks. You know they're going to get a few because, you know, if you just cause them to hold the ball, like I'm watching um, when they were playing Josh, you know, Josh Allen last week, the Giants, and they were making him. They're causing him to move around. I'm like, well, if he, they're causing him to move around, they're going to get to Sam because it's just that's just what's going to happen and for a variety of reasons and so but yes it wasn't like i mean every team that's coming they're a slump buster for any pass rush yeah. defense mm -hmm. they're a slump buster right now because that's it's just what's going on and it's um you know it's it's not I just don't think not the acceptable staff, in any manner i just don't think the staff and bianami included have adjusted enough no, to what well, they really are dealing with because they think if we just bring an extra right. running back or extra tight end, that'll be good enough. That'll give Sam the time. And, and, and you know, but like you say, they're not moving the pocket. They're not uh, designing rollout. They're not utilizing his legs enough. They're not giving him the best opportunity. But, and, they, and, I, and I think they lost this game, frankly, John, in the offseason with, with who they signed I, in the free agency yeah. and how they attacked the draft. And I, I, think that's, I think that's very fair. And I think the other part of that, the other part of that equation is, the, the inconsistency in the run game because if you had, you know, they couldn't get anything going there, mm -hmm. anything, and that was a big problem too. So then you're relying on a, a, a part of your offense that has struggles in one very big area, and that makes it difficult. And you know, if you're having to throw, they know you're going to throw, and there's they don't really they're not giving the t defenses that change up. And and again, I just look at how the Giants. I mean. In the end, the Giants only scored 14 points. It's not like they had this wonderful day on offense, but they had a really, really good first half. And they, you know, they would get the, the moving the pocket. You did have a quarterback who can scramble, but you're moving the pocket. You're running tempo. You're, you're, you know, some quicker throws, et cetera. And and then they were able to run effectively enough to keep it, you know, keep it somewhat honest at times, right? Not 
horribly, but somewhat. I mean, you know, um, so I think that that was a difference. But, yeah, I mean, there's <clears throat> I, I, I go back to you have a young, a young quarterback and you had to do a better job building a wall around him, knowing that you have a young first time quarterback. But I and I, you know, and <clears throat> maybe from the enemy's perspective, it's like you have to learn exactly what you have. And by seven games, I think we all know. Um, but. You know, then then you have to adapt, adjust, and all that. And I know there are things that they've tried to do. I mean, you're right. Like the the running backs, that the chipping is done every game. Mm-hmm. Like they do that a lot. Kansas City did that a lot. Um, but it's just not enough. They need to do more than that. He doesn't understand that. Right. I think I think at this point it's going to be about style more than you know that you know style what you're calling and um, et cetera. That more so. And and not every team is going to play the exact same coverage. But like the Giants with that press man, they just were coming up most of the game playing press Mm -hmm. and you know first of all receivers have to win quicker um they have to and and that's not always happening um but um that's something that like mccorn if i if i'm in that situation i'm (laughs) i'm I'm gonna go to my boys on saturday i'm gonna do what ohio state does with marvin harrison find the find the mother fricker who can get you those yards and that's terry mccorn Mm -hmm. so you know what i mean like he had one target in the first half i mean that you know, and I, it's not all about him, but when an offense struggles and your, your top receiver gets one target, not just the top receiver, but the guy who gives your, you know, <clears throat> you see the energy he provides when he makes big plays. He just plays with a passion. I think you want, you need to tap into that early, try and get him the ball and, and do, you know, so I, but he's the guy that can, that's, if he's not going to, if it's not a complete win, you know, he's got a shot because it's just the way he plays. And John- right. John, I know we're harping on the offensive line here, but it, it had to concern Ron and the staff that Sadiq Charles, one of their better offensive linemen, limps off with a calf injury. Like, that's yeah. got to be terrifying for them that they have yeah. to now dip into, into the, the depth, depth, the yeah. alleged depth they have on the line. The de- yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, as you know, Chris Paul has been, had been there. I know Ricky Stromberg goes in, um, and Stromberg did a nice job when he went into guard in, in the preseason, but it's not his natural position. It's Chris Paul. Mm. Where is he at in his development? I mean, we've heard a lot about him. There, he's a different style of guard than than City Charles. But yeah, I mean, that's that. You know, it has to be. And where does Gates, I mean, John, John? Where does Gates rank amongst NFL <clears throat> centers in pass blocking? Because it he gets beat like a drum routinely. Uh, I, I'd have to look and up. Maybe and maybe that. I'm just looking at it wrong because I'm only <clears throat> seeing the bad parts of it. The but. Hard, well, the hard part sometimes too is you know you there are times and yeah there are times where he's given up too much. And there are other times, like, you know, you don't – I want to know the assignments better, but that's, right, you know. Right, right. We, 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 we see what we see. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, they, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a unit struggle. And there's sometimes with protection, again, it's like there are times where the receivers have to be better with their routes or quicker, win quicker, because that helps the protection too. PFF you know, has that, them ranked 20th. Okay. 20th, wow. Yeah, no, that's probably – that's in that, in that range is, you know. I guess what, that's like, expected. Yeah. yeah, and the one thing, the one thing for him too. I mean, again, you just—they <clears throat> didn't build the wall they needed to. That's you know, that's the bottom line. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, for whatever reason, you know, and there you can look at back at draft decisions. You can look at free agents' decisions. Um, and this goes back a few years because it's just been, it's been a, a a trouble area for them for several years. Yeah. So, you know, that, that is, is – and, and I go back to even the run game because if you had something you can lean on, you know, again, I go back to the Giants. I mean, they had Saquon Barkley, and they could run the ball enough. And But if you had that part where you could kind of hang your hat on that, then it also reduces the pressure in every other area. Yeah. That, to me, is a bigger – I mean, eventually when Barkley touches the ball so many times, he's going to hurt you. You know what I mean? Yeah, He's exactly. But you. it's all yeah, but it's also <clears throat> it's, it's the ability to keep a defense a little bit more honest. Yeah, um, right. And and things like that. And so that's that's something that they haven't really gotten enough of this year. Um, mm-hmm. I thought it would be a little bit better, but it hasn't been. And it, you know, it's something for a lot for a, for a few reasons. But that to me is also a part of the problem. And I'm not just going to hang that on the line. I mean, there's probably you know there's a few reasons for that. But as there always are. But I think that is something that needed to be better as well because you you you're kind of putting all your eggs in in this pass basket and it's 
No. Yeah, throwing away too hey, much. Hey, John, John, real quick before we let you go, I just wanted to get your take. Not that it really matters, but when I saw yesterday in the postgame presser from Ron was I, I'm seeing a guy who slowly but surely is kind of fading away. Like, I, I don't know, man. Like, he looks kind of punched out. I mean, I don't. I Haven't don't, we said that about him the last few weeks? I, to me, in the last few weeks, he <laughs> looks more sort of out of it yeah. in these post game things, and and it doesn't mean anything. That, but it just that's what my observation. Are you noticing a difference in his demeanor? I think you see a lot. Um, there have been some games where after the after the games, and yesterday was not necessarily. I mean, you can. I think there's a massive amount of frustration too because um, I, they definitely thought they were going to be better than this. Yeah. And I think they understand the, the ramifications if they're not. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, in talking to them in the offseason, I know like they felt like they built a strong roster. Clearly still had holes, but one that was better. And I think the, there was excitement about what Howell could do. Mm-hmm. So I feel, you know, I think that some of that is um, just a lot of frustration. I mean, he's, he's – um, you know, so it's hard for me to say checked out, but I, I like even after um, the 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 you know some of the games that there has been more emotion than what you've seen. I think it's got to be very, very, very frustrating. He just looks defeated to me. Well, well that, yeah, that, they that, just lost two out of three. No, yeah. I know, but terrible I mean, teams. He just really looks like he has no answers. He just come up with cliches. Well, I, think, I, I I think I think the hard part is that I'm I think that's where it's hard because. I don't know that anymore. What are the answers? And I don't know, um, you know, some some of the things he's got to keep. He's trying to, you know, he knows there are ten games left, so you can't go a certain way. I guess I don't know. I, I don't. He said don't that know. yesterday. I, yeah, there are ten yeah, yeah, games left. But yeah. look, it's got to wear on you. Yeah. C- oh, Cakes definitely. went through the the starts of the season. Two and five, two and five, three and four, three and four. It's deja vu. It's it's the yeah, same old skin. Nowhere. Well, then, John, we, and we haven't even talked to you about Jonathan Allen's comments after the game. I mean, he's obviously pissed off. We got to run, Jason. Yeah. But, uh, John, we appreciate yeah, the time. Uh-huh. We're going to have Jonathan Allen coming up at 9 o'clock. That's John Kime covers the commanders for ESPN.com. Thanks, J.K.